This episode of the Infamous Podcast is brought to you by the Flying Pork Apparel Company. The Flying Pork Apparel Company is an awfully long name to fit into a 15-second ad. We're most likely going to have to cut it short, but our design of tees and customer services are like way long on quality. Visit flyingporkapparel.com and shirt yourself, folks. Thank you. Hey, welcome back to the Infos Podcast. This is episode 232, and today I have two special guests with me. Why don't you guys go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Patricia DeSalvo Vieira. And I'm Mike Vieira. And where would they know you guys from? Or might not know you guys yet, but will know you guys from soon. We're from the feature film Tournament. So Tournament is, um, one, it's a really fun movie. So let's just start there. Um, and it is a movie about tabletop gaming, which I know a lot of you guys out there listening like. Um, and I'm just going to read the summary if you guys are okay with that, your little like tagline. It's, uh, it's about a group of unlikely friends who gather at the local game shop for an epic battle only to have a beautiful outsider turn everything upside down. Tournament captures the spirit, camaraderie, and smack talk of millions of players around the world. And I will say part of my favorite thing about the movie was the smack talk. Um, when when Lung started going off in Chinese, um, <laughs> that really cracked me up. I'm a big wrestling fan, and uh, Asuka is a Japanese wrestler in WWE, and one of her kind of gimmicks lately is she smack talks in Japanese, and it's super fun. So that kind of, like, tapped into my, like, oh, hey, this is awesome. Like, I'm, I'm all in. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, a lot of people love Lung. Yeah, Lung is great. Um, I, I, I liked all, like, I, I thought all the characters really brought something different and, and we can go through that, but I do want to say, uh, Ricardo, is it Shavara? Is that how you say his last name? Shavira. Um, Shavira. Yeah. I did not recognize him. Like he's usually this big, like macho guy. Like, um, yep. I, I remembered from Desperate Housewives and I loved, uh, the first season of Santa Clarita. Well, I love the whole series of Santa Clarita diet, especially when he played the sheriff living next door to, to Timothy Oliphant and, uh, Drew Barrymore. And I did not recognize until the credits came up. And I was like, holy crap. Like, he just disappeared into the role um, of Steve. Yeah, and I, I thought that was really fun. And being a, a dad of a mouthy preteen, I, I, I definitely identified with him. <laughs> oh, awesome. I'm sure he'd love to, he'll love hearing that yeah. from you. So, um, so why don't you guys talk a little bit about um, where you came up for the concept of the movie? Um, maybe some of... Uh, how you went about creating the game of tournament. Um, and then we can talk more about like the production and stuff, stuff like that. Sure. Uh, basically the idea sort of kicking around um, after Mike would come home uh, after going to the game shop to play magic, the gathering on you know Friday night magic and um, just the funny stories or his friends would come over and they would play and they were like speaking to me like a completely different language and it was hilarious. And then also, you know, I would go pick them up or drop them off. And I was just always astounded at the the diversity of just all different types of people, um, ages and backgrounds and races and um, just different looking types of people all just having fun, getting along, playing this game. And I thought that was really cool. And there's just, uh, I just kind of built up all these interesting stories and uh, along the way, and then Mike, you know, and I started talking about it. We were sort of talking about it, and we happened to talk to another person who ended up becoming our co-writer. And Sam. we said, yeah, we really like to come up with this, this to really capture the, the game store experience and, and the relationships. And he says, oh, I'd love to help on, out on that. And basically, uh, to make a long story short, over the course of about a year, we met all three of us together and had writing sessions and you know, first solid draft was about a year into it. And, nice. Um, yeah, that, that's how it all started. Very cool. Um, so is the gaming shop you guys shot in, is that your game shop, Mike, that you go to? Or is that a different store? It, it is. A, it's a, It's called All Star Cards mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. It's been around okay. for something years. Uh, it was where I'd go, but uh, the uh, 
they don't open uh, as frequently now. I mean, right now they're closed. Yeah, nobody's nobody's open made. right now. I... <laughs> but before that, they were they were kind of going from multiple events to very uh, very few events. But it is okay. our local game shop that we uh, I, I knew the owner, and that's how he uh, allowed us to to shoot and we get the authentic. You feel like you're in a game shop because yeah. you are in a. Game oh yeah. Um, how long did it take you guys to come up with with the game of tournament and the rules and the characters and like do you have like multiple sets of cards just hanging around your house? So the interesting thing, people are saying, "Hey, where's the game?" And we're like, "Well, it's not a game. It's we came up with the concept and the props just for using the movie because we didn't want to go get permission from Wizards of the Coast or mm. some other you know actual game. Uh, so we came up with names that were not used by any any card game." Um, and then Patricia worked with the uh, visual uh, visual designers and some artists to come up with the cards. So it's funny. It's like people look at the movie and they say, oh, where's your copy of the game? We're like, no, we created just enough to be on camera, on set, but we don't have a fully functioning built game. Yet. Yes. Yet. <laughs> Yet so being the have, operative term, right? Yes. Yeah, we have all the artwork. We have cards. And so we want to go to like gaming conventions. We actually had some of the props from the movie that – we hand out to people that come over and talk to us and, and buy a Blu-ray or, or a mat. Um, so we do have some of the original stuff, and then we made some reprint cards to hand we out even to people. foils, gold foils. Oh, wow. Kind of... Very cool. Yeah. You guys should do like a Kickstarter or something and, and get the game out there. We would love to do that. We'd love to do a Kickstarter for the next film and uh, the game simultaneously. Uh, we're just trying to get the word out and get information about it, try to get you know, some more people following us before we do something yeah. like that. Are you going to do another tournament movie? We'd like to. Yeah. I could see it. We're, being, working, uh, we're working on it. I mean, we're working on it. And we're also working on a, like a series concept as well. Oh, cool. I want to see like Aaron versus Paul where it like just, they, they got together and then it ended badly and now they're just bitter rivals. <laughs> and she just takes them <laughs> to the woodshed constantly. And she's like the Johnny Lawrence bully and he has to overcome her. That would be hilarious. Um, awkward. Yeah, totally awkward. Um, so, I, I think one of the things that I really kind of like kind of hit like nostalgia for me was um, the guild. Like it, it had a very, uh, very similar look and feel to to the camaraderie amongst the group. Um, you know, I, I don't know if you remember, you remember the the Felicia Day little web series that they did, uh, I think, like, you know, 15 years ago now at this point. Wow, I'm old. Um, but it, it kind of had that like same feel to it about the way the players interacted with each other, because while. They were definitely a family. They were there to just bust each other's balls as much as possible. Actually, I have never seen the show. Okay. Um, I don't know if my co-writer had seen it. He may have. Um, but we, people, people do talk a about it a lot. A lot of people do compare you know, a lot to yeah. uh, that show, um, which you know was wildly successful. So we, oh, yeah. You know, I we think, think it went for like five awesome. seasons or something like that and you know had a yeah. – had a music video but um but it, it was just, like it didn't feel like a, like like and i'm not saying like oh you guys ripped off the guild i mean it just kind of had that like uh spirit of the show you know and, and the movie had that same spirit where it's like this is an authentic group of people doing this particular activity and like you know the guild was like that with online gaming so um yeah i, I thought that was great i thought the cast had amazing chemistry together i really felt like i was watching people who had been friends and enemies for for years uh who had been playing games so you guys did a really great job like mixing like the cast how how did you go about finding um finding your cast because i mean a lot of them are, are largely unknown yeah um so uh paul is my brother thomas mm -hmm. so that was pretty easy to find um <laughs> and we did you know an actor's access uh you know listing mm -hmm. uh, or sorry, breakdown services and um we got about a thousand submissions per character. So oh, wow. it was, uh, so Thomas also helped us produce and um, we also um, had Mariah and um, mostly Mariah and Thomas and I just went through submissions and set up auditions and callbacks. And, you know, literally the people that we cast, it was as if, you know, Margo walked into the room and Stu walked into the uh -huh. room and Lung, you know, it was just like when they, walked into the room and started talking it was like oh that's you know 
there's Adam, you know, there's mm-hmm. Adam, with, uh, you know, Arthur. And yeah. so it was really cool. They just kind of presented themselves, but it was it, pretty amazing. The uh, amount of talent and people that, uh, you know, came across our desk, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And uh, Los Angeles, you know, is a wonderful place to find <laughs> talent. There's so many people there. So many talented people. Yeah, so many. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 like I said, I really liked them. I, I, your, your brother was great. I, I thought I was because I was looking. I was like, where? What else is he in? Because I want to go watch something else with him because his, uh, his awkwardness came across as like really great, but it wasn't like the overwhelming attribute to his character. He just really right. was a like genuine nice guy, which, um, you know, he, you know, spoiler wins in the end, like you know, at life, maybe not the game, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, um. The Ramin and Elliot, I, I thought were great together as well. Um, uh, and, you know, um, you know, we've all had friends who's, who, who have really hot moms. So I, I felt for Ramin a lot because I remember we used to give my one buddy uh, just hell all the time. Anytime his mom would show up and be like, yeah, hey, when I'm when I'm 18, I'm going to ask your mom out. Um, <laughs> and, you know, so he had to deal with that from uh, from everybody, um, you know, and and. and I I think one of the great things you guys did with the characters is in the first 30 to 40 seconds of meeting each one, like you didn't have to slam over my head who they were in the group and who they were as a person. You just did a really good job, like kind of telling a really quick story about like why they're there for the most part and and what their, what their role in this family is. And, and I, I really appreciate that. Oh, good. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, you know, it was definitely a challenge uh, introducing everybody quickly, but then yet giving you some information about them, and then all be and it all being in one room. <laughs> that was definitely a presented a, a challenge for sure. Yeah, and trying to make it, you know, because with the confines of three a three round tournament, mm-hmm. you should have eight to ten people, and you know, eventually condensing maybe different personalities into one person, but then. You want to make each person distinct, like all three kids. You don't want them all to be the same, right? Or the adults. so that was a, a little bit of the uh, challenge and tweaking and um, to make it interesting. And so you don't, you don't, again, get two people and you get them mixed up. Like no, they're there's distinctly. You may not remember their name, but you remember their their type. Right. Right. They, yeah. How they were. Yeah. There. There were. I mean, like, because both. Uh... Elliot and Ramin were, were both kind of like quiet and mousy, but in different ways. And, you know, <laughs> um, when Katie walked in and, and just started going through Elliot's book and taking cards, it's like, OK, like she is the she's super entitled and, and thinks she gets everything. And then when uh, you meet Steve, her dad, it's like, OK, I get it now. <laughs> like he's not he has zero, <laughs> there is no control here. Um, and, and like I said, as the the dad of a mouthy preteen, um, you know, that's a, that's a balance we all have to fight constantly. Um, yeah, uh, I do have a question about one of the subplots because it, it was one of my favorite things is the random Russians that kept walking into the store and, and <laughs> delivering things. Um, one of my favorite things was just the look of disdain that they gave the group as they had to like slink through to get back to Arthur to, uh, you know, do their deal. Um, I, I like. I kind of felt like maybe Arthur's like running some sort of like hitman shop, and they're just coming in and like showing, "Hey, this is my proof." Okay, here's your money. Let's go. Um, I like how they all thought like, "Oh, he's getting like Russian knockoff cards or you know Russian specialty <laughs> cards and things like that." Um, where did that come from? And did you just tell those guys like, "Hey, just go in and like act like you would act." Um, with a bunch of people who who you you kind of already despise just based on appearance. <laughs> um. Well, you know, we just kind of would joke about how game shops stayed open in general mm-hmm. um, over the years, and um, you know the struggle, and and, and obviously we um, have sympathized with different game shop owners that we you know we love uh, you know that we've met along the way. And, um, you know, a lot of them have side businesses and, but no, most people don't know what they are. Mm-hmm. So, um, we just kind of joked about the different rumors and things that we've heard other gamers say about different game shop owners. Um, you know, Oh, they must do this or they must do that or, Oh, maybe it's shady or, and so we just kind of wanted to play on, you know, also the fact that game shops a lot of times have to have, you know, 
people that do other things to make money because they struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, they're there because they love it and want to, you know, have that for the community. I don't know if you want to add to that. So we just had fun making up silly scenarios. And, you know, Arthur is, uh, his background is that he's like former special ops <laughs> and, uh, you know, was in Vietnam and, uh, that's how he has all these connections, but he's really not doing anything shady, mm-hmm. but he's very private and uh, he has all these international contacts because of his you know, former military background, et cetera. So yeah. Just have well, fun. And yeah. It's uh, funny. Uh, I think oh. the first draft of the script, <laughs> everybody wanted more, more Arthur. Yeah. Or like, <laughs> but he's, he's just kind of like the guy who runs the shop, you know, yeah. it's really the characters. And so he actually, between the first draft and within five months when we started shooting, he developed, there was more background and more character to him. So those two, I don't remember if he was in the first draft, those two guys coming in, or if those are something we no, specifically we add, added, yeah, we added it. To, to point to there's more complexity mm-hmm. to the game shop owner. So that that's it's funny that you mentioned that. Yeah, because oh, he just kept nice coming character. and going, and like he'd, he'd set his pairings and then disappear, and they'd have to yell back at who won, and he's like, oh, all right, all right whatever. Like, you know, <laughs> I've got more important stuff to him doing back here. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm playing Animal Crossing. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you, Patricia. You were about to say something. Oh, no, yeah, no. He was just, he was a lot of fun. Uh, it was a fun character. And then, um, you know, Adam, who plays Arthur, just uh, just owned it. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. Very cool. Um, okay. So this is your first feature. (laughs) Yes. Was it, did, did you wake up every morning and like, I'm living my dream or did you wake up every morning and be like, don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. Don't screw this up. Or was it somewhere in the middle? Hmm. (laughs) So I'd have to say going into pre-production, um, it was definitely, you know, um, you know, my dream is coming true. This is amazing. I wish, you know, here and there, like, oh, I wish we had money for this, or oh, we lost this person, or we lost that because we didn't have the funding. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, scrambling for funding. You know, all the the non fun parts of filmmaking. It was definitely filmmaking, uh, uh, film business, everything. Uh, you know, learned by fire. Um, serious on the job training. Um, shooting was every. T- time the camera rolled and I was looking at and listening to the uh, video you know, in the video village looking at the monitors um, I was in heaven um, that that was that was amazing the actors just uh, performances were gold and I didn't have to do too much tweaking uh, because I you know the the time I got to spend with them prior and the amount of time and work that they put into their characters prior to showing up on set, it just, they were just amazing. It was, <laughs> that was a dream come true. Awesome. Um, the technical side of, of getting things done, that was uh, an extreme challenge. The space was extremely small. Um, we had a lot of lighting challenges. Um, and then, you know, um, just fun little things like the base camp bathroom you know, breaking <laughs> and yeah, you just like this, the non creative stuff, the producing yeah. side just is like, yeah, but, um, but yeah, that working with um, some of my team and um, the actors was just a dream. And I, I do hope to be able to revive some of the characters for sure. And, uh, you know, do other projects. And then yeah. you really loved the post-production. Oh, post-production all, all was post. awesome too. I mean, my my team, I'd love to just continue to work mm-hmm. with over and over, and over again. Um, that was it was magical seeing it all come together because so many people didn't understand my vision. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, you know, including you know, like telling the actors to sit by themselves in the room and talk directly to the camera. I mean, mm-hmm. they were just like, "What is going on?" You know, and then the the transitions to all the the fantasy sequences. You know, they didn't like fully get. Um, yeah. So it was just really cool when the visual effects started coming together and, um, you know, actually it all matched up that, you know, oh, this this did work. <laughs> yeah, the, inter- the interstitials there were a lot of fun with the samurai and the cowboy and the boxing into the arm wrestling. That was just, I don't know. I, I, I enjoy that kind of like whimsy and, and sort of thing. So, so that's really cool. Um, 
Thanks. Did you do a lot of rehearsals to get them to get like the verbiage down and kind of like the motion of like, you know, like it's not like you're playing like poker or something like there's a very deliberate way you have to lay like you lay down your cards and, and like kind of present like, yeah, you think I've got you. But no, bam, two damage. You're done. Um, did you go <laughs> did you go through rehearsals? Did you did you when you were casting? Did you did you try and get people who had some sort of like tabletop gaming background? Uh, no, the only person that had played before was Thomas. And that was, like, you know, because he used to play like Pokemon um, growing up. And then Mike and Thomas played together. And, uh, but basically we just had people over. Yeah, and once we did, once we had everybody selected, we had the, like a formal read through. And after we did the read through, we had like some food and we basically had, I had like three or four of my friends that played. We all sat across the table and like, literally walked how through play. basic how to play Magic the Gathering, what cool. you do, where you put your stuff, and moving so that they they had that kind of sense of what was going on. And some of them actually, after that, went to different game yeah. shops and they would watch other people play and see how they were doing things, ask questions. So Yeah, oh, we were cool. so lucky with, with our cast. I mean, they just, they were so, I guess, just really excited. So they, they did their homework and they totally rocked it. That's good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, because they all, I mean, they all felt definitely very believable, like, you know, and, and you know, I, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this. Like, you didn't just cast, like, super pretty people to play, like, gaming. It's like, yeah, right, that guy's never going into a game shop. Like, they, they're all, like, you know, actors and actresses, so they're 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 handsome and, and, and beautiful and everything. But, like, they felt like they belong there. And, you know, I, I think um, I like the accoutrement they all came with. Like Margot had her thing with her necklace and drinking the Coke uh, before she could do anything. Um, you know, the the flaming hot Cheetos, uh, you know, that that Stu had and, and, you know, Lung's Chinese snacks that he didn't want to share with anybody. <laughs> um, you know, but it, it was fun just kind of watching like each of them. Um, the soda machine was also a great like gag who, who came up with that. And uh you know, th like, did you tell them like which ones were going to be in which, or did you leave it to a surprise to the cast when they were when they were getting it to let them figure out that game? Well, you know what's funny is it was actually <laughs> that it was based when we were writing that. I remember it was based on the fact I think that the owner of the store had accidentally put the wrong ones in, <laughs> so it was basically based on that happened, and we thought it was kind of funny. Um, but uh, you know, so they knew that it was in the script, but yeah, it's it funny right because. As we travel around the country, like every store has a story almost exactly like this, like okay. where they actually did it or they put it in wrong in the register, so they get a receipt back and they they bought a Pepsi and said something else. Or I mean, so we hear the story. It's funny. We thought it was very localized. Maybe it's a bit one store or LA, mm -hmm. but you get common like again, like just like you were mentioning before, uh, the kid with the with the quote unquote hot mom coming yeah. in. Almost every store is like, oh, we have one of those. <laughs> And so all these these things that we thought were almost particular to a particular store, they're they're not. It's like almost everywhere. Yeah, everywhere has a similar story. More universal. Yeah, more universal than we thought it would be. Very cool. Very cool. Um, okay, so when I'm just trying to think of like again the right way to to word some of this stuff. Um, when it came to picking your location, you obviously went with the like an, an existing gaming store did you at any point ever think of like hey let's put this in like a little bigger room so so we have more room to move around the tables and, and, and get different kind of shots and pickups or was it we want to keep this like tight and confined like this is a card store and this tournament is like a special thing that happens and and you know disrupts the normal flow of business or was it something completely different um i mean the location that we chose uh, we were looking for a place that had a lot of production design built mm -hmm. in so we wouldn't have the expense of that. Yeah. And then... Um, you get authenticity too. The, it's mm -hmm. authentic. Um, I would have loved a larger space, <laughs> but um, the owner of All Star Cards was so supportive and gracious that, um, you know, he gave he gave us an offer that, it didn't make sense for us to go anywhere else. Okay. So, um, so it was a blessing, but then as a filmmaker, you know, the technical, you know, um, challenges of getting camera angles, um, did become 
very challenging. But at the same time, uh, that the the close quarters and the tightness and the squeezing by each other to get to go pay something or to go to the bathroom or whatever. I mean, that's all authentic to that space, which makes it kind of funny in of itself. So it actually worked um, despite the the challenge of, you know, getting the camera where I wanted it mm-hmm. uh, sometimes. But yeah, it, it uh, kind of came out of necessity. But at the same time, I absolutely loved how it looked mm-hmm. um, to, to capture that authentic collectible card shop with these quirky people and the quirky mm-hmm. things and everything about it. You, know? you just can't, how, how hard would it be to build just 25 years of dust, dust yeah. and <laughs> it, 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 it's just, you know, you can't have a production designer perfectly put stuff that's been, you know, and, right, right. Uh, piled up for 25 years. So <laughs> I, you know, I think the, the space added to the intimacy of everything as well. Um, and I was just curious if you had, had thought about it, like, doing like a bigger room where like maybe there would be like three or four tables and, and multiple games going on at once. But no, I mean, I, I think that's great. It did. It added to the intimacy. And um, how seasoned was your crew? Um, you know, being a first time feature director, like, did you, did you go with like some, like was your cinema, has your cinematographer been doing it for a long time? Or, you know, did you, did you go with like relatively um, a, a relatively new crew? like yourself to, so you could all like kind of learn and, and succeed all at the same time. Um, I would say they're pretty new filmmakers, you know, maybe done a couple features here and there. Um, so yeah, it was def- definitely, we had some challenges because of, you know, lack of experience, mm-hmm. that's sure. but I think, you know, overall it, it uh, we overcame. <laughs> <laughs> So, but uh, it definitely, I think every filmmaker wishes they had a bigger budget and could work with, mm-hmm. you know, more experienced people. But I, I think um, we, we figured it out. So, there yeah. Um, yeah. Were Were there any actors like, and you don't have to name names or anything, but were there actors that you you tried to get <laughs> that were maybe like a name that like just didn't work out, or did you did you intentionally go with, you know, um, the actors who had kind of a a more shallow imdb um well i mean our budget dictated who you know basically what we could do um in terms of um you know day rates and things mm-hmm. like that so um we actually didn't get our sag approval until like the friday before we started shooting so okay. we weren't allowed, we weren't allowed to uh, actually say we were SAG, we would, we'd had to post everything as non-union, hmm. but in the notes in the very top, so we are trying to go SAG. Yeah. So, um, so that's the kind of part of it. And then um, once we knew for sure we were doing SAG, and once I knew I could possibly raise for more money, that's when we went after Ricardo. Okay. So... At the, and we got him like that Wednesday before the Monday yeah. we started shooting. We met him for the first time the that weekend before we started shooting. Yeah, that was so like crazy. Wow. Uh, yeah. So what's it like we were, having to having to get that SAG approval? I guess is that is that the proper term? Um, I mean, I know like just, there's plenty of it's a lot of forms. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of forms. A lot of paperwork, and you uh, put up a lot of money, and <laughs> you hire a payroll company. Uh, but if you want to get SAG actors, you have to do it. Mm-hmm. So um, Patricia did was basically the lead producer all the way through about two weeks before we started. Okay. Then about two weeks before I helped and, and jumped in, took over like lead producer, line producer, so she could focus almost exclusively on directing. Um, so that's kind of how we broke it. She was, she's been in charge of the project the whole time, mm-hmm. but we didn't want her to be worrying about lunches, you know, when you're shooting. So I would take care of all the, the, you know, on set kind of stuff and just basically tell her how much time we had between breaks and here's what you need to do. And she'd work with her AD and, and just get the shots done. And, and I'd work with our other, uh, the PAs and stuff to make sure, again, food was there. I mean, we had, it looks like a very small group, but I think a minimum of 30 people a day mm-hmm. up to almost 50 people a day. Oh, wow. Between crew and cast. Yeah. Um, and then the, uh, one good thing is a base camp was across the street in a little bakery shop, little cupcake shop. <laughs> but all the actors were usually, if they're not on camera, they're all sitting there and all hanging out together. That's good. At first we thought it was kind of, a, we'd be a pain, but it actually worked really well because they got to become 
friends and then they'd be like oh hey let's go on the set now and <laughs> so it was a, it was a ha happy accidents but those those last few days right before we started was crazy because the friday we started monday the friday before um we we had to go pick up our permit actually mm -hmm. permit to shoot we got our sag approval that day um we lost lost our original base camp, which is supposed to be next door. Uh, the second AD and I had to go walking the neighborhood to find the new base camp. And parking. We found the new base camp. <laughs> we lost all 40s parking spots. We had to go get new parking spots. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, and there wasn't sufficient like toilet things available. So that weekend, our second AD was calling around and we, we got a, a fancy little event porta potty with it's flushing fancy. toilets and stuff. Okay. Put behind the building. So within those those three days, it was like amazing what we got done. So was it like and one of those? Didn't know any about this. She didn't know about any about this until we actually like started. Yeah. They were like, oh yeah, by the way. She's like, oh, this is cool. Like, oh yeah. And we, just, we hooked this up on Friday. So. Nice. Um, your luxury toilets, was that like a trailer that pulls up and like, you know, it, it's like they walk up the steps like you would have at like a big concert or festival yeah. or state yeah. fair? Yeah. yeah. With lights and running water because they have the tanks. Yeah, nicer than most people's bathrooms. <laughs> well, it is LA, so you know they 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 probably yeah. got some pretty fancy uh, mobile services for 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 the film industry. I imagine. Yes. Um, <laughs> very fun. So the yeah. the the restaurant next door was a combination of Italian and Thai. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You caught that. Um, I, I, I was I was I was sitting there and I I heard him order spaghetti spaghetti amico meatballs and then Raheem ordered pad thai and I was like, God, I hope they don't mix those up. Um, <laughs> so I can't imagine like like I'll have pad thai, but can I have some meatballs thrown in there, please? Like, oh, um, but yeah, no, I thought like you guys just did those little like quirks and, and, and things like that, and um, why weren't they allowed to play in I tie? <laughs> just because I the the idea being well, uh, you don't want people just playing games and taking up space long periods of time, you know. Uh, for so the they kind of had it, you yeah. Know, like even at that moment, they were going to be playing quickly. <laughs> yeah, uh, they kind of had, you know, we're just tired of people coming and sitting and playing and not ordering or taking too long, things like that. So they they have a history there. Okay. Like, because I thought it was funny because they had ordered and she still kicked them out. And it's like, well, yeah. like you, you went and put their food in. You put their order in. Like now they're, they've they started to make it. And what do you do now? Um, so that was it was just like, OK, well, that doesn't make any sense. Why Candace is kicking them out? Um, I also thought it was really funny when they were teasing Elliot about getting Candace's phone number because I expected someone much closer in age to him um, not to be like, you know, not like, you know, older, but like, you know, a, a woman who's obviously in her 20s and he was like, just has a total crush on her. I was, you know, the the please, please. Like how he kept yelling it very aggressively and he was trying to be polite. And it was it was just it was just a cool little moment. Yeah. And then um, we kept it in there. But uh, Christian, who played Elliot, you know, added that, um, you know, he improv the line. I was totally going to write swipe her. And we just, yeah. We just added that and he kept it because it's hilarious you know it's just so innocent you know mm -hmm. um yeah he had no was, idea what that meant but like right, yeah right <laughs> yeah it was really cute <laughs> um so so what's i guess what's next for you guys like you, you you've alluded to to maybe doing a an, um revisiting the tournament verse um you, well hold on wait before that you guys took well, this like to gen con right like awesome. you you took but, this movie to gen con correct yes and did gen it con and origins yeah did it just go over like gangbusters at both places it did like i it was amazing and i and it's one of those things like highlights in your life that you're like i don't know if i'll ever get to experience that ever again like mm -hmm. that's how awesome it was you because know we, we, we took it, it was, for like a preview to gen con yeah. the first year and nobody and, knew who we were and nobody and knew we were but they loved it and then the second year we went back it and it was packed. it was done it was packed there were people like talking amongst themselves like oh that's you that's you and people came from the first time just specifically to come see the screening oh wow and it was just like this chaos but yet fun party going on yeah, all was, during the screening where was, you could hear the epic. movie but you could hear all the little conversation and groups going on at the same time all focused on the movie and then we have this big group shot of everybody afterwards yeah. yelling and screaming about it you're like that's pretty cool and then uh so we got best gamer film there mm -hmm. and then um 
which we're very honored to get that at uh, a place like Gen Con. And then we got uh, Best Feature and then the Audience Award at Origins, which again is, you know, was amazing. I mean, it's our peeps. I mean, it's a right. gaming huge gaming conventions and people who love games. And if, if we're making people happy that love to play games and we made a movie about people who love to play games, it's like, ah, it's, it's just amazing. So, I mean, I know not every, it's not for everybody, but those definitely those two places where dreams come true mm. um, due to show it there was, it was, you know, and of course terrifying. You're like, how are they going to respond? Are they going to, I don't like it. You know? Yeah, it could have gone very yeah. badly. They all be throwing their dice at you and like. Yes, you know? I was. You know, oh. you're, you just just don't know. You know, and and so it was it was it was incredible. Yeah, one of the teams I I worked with in the past, like they they were all like big. Just it didn't matter what the game was. They were just tabletop gamers, and uh, they were constantly like scouring like Kickstarter for games and going to Gen Con and like getting the games and all the expansions and and like. You know, and I was looking at the money they were spending. I was like, wow, I need to invent a card game um, that people <laughs> like because these yeah. people spend a lot of money. And you, you did that with Steve with the the, the gambling addict side of uh, <laughs> give me three packs. Um, yep. So, um, it's okay. Incredible. It's incredible. And it's funny yeah. when, when uh, some folks in Hollywood are like, yeah, we just don't we just don't get who your audience is. <laughs> you know, they want a clearly defined audience. And I don't even know what to say to them because I've already given them like the whole pitch, you know, and then, you know, you tell them how many people play, you know, tabletop games and mm -hmm. show if you narrow down to uh, trading card games and, you know, the list goes on about all, you know, and then you show them Facebook and Instagram data as to who your followers are and, you know, and ads and, you, sh you know, all of that. Right. And they're just like, yeah, they just, we just, we just, we just, like, they just don't get it. They don't get gaming gamers, gamer movies, unless you're, you know, a big multi-million dollar, you know, thing. It's been very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, these people spend money. <laughs> so I, <laughs> buy, yeah. like, and I the beauty of it is, you know, you go to different things. Like we go to the gaming conventions or we go to mm -hmm. star city games. We do magic conventions and, we're talking to gamers like we think our target audience, but then we've also had screenings where there's literally nobody that plays tabletop games or trading card games in the audience. Mm -hmm. We're like, oh, how are they gonna react to it? And they react very favorably, just a straight comedy, like a slice of life, mm -hmm. looking at the group dynamics. I mean, it's, some people say, oh, it's like a modern day breakfast club. Um, but it's, it's great because, I mean, that was one of the reasons why there was two writers and me involved was mm -hmm to get authentic movie, but not be too over the head of people who didn't play. So right. Patricia brought in that aspect of, it's gotta be funny to someone who doesn't even know anything about gaming. Um, and then, you know, we had the other co-writer who was like a hardcore gamer. Mm -hmm. And so there was that, that tension, which we think came out great on the screen to, to satisfy both audiences where, you know, we have people that watch the movie at home, like it's a date night, one person's a gamer, one person's not, and they both can enjoy it. So, um, we're pleasantly surprised by the crossover. Yeah, I definitely would have gone to see this in the theater. Like if I like after watching the trailer, like I'd be like, oh yeah, I definitely because like that, like you said, that slice of life. It's it's that that's the type of movie I really really get into. Um, yeah, it, it's just I I think I, like I think kind of Hollywood's a little bit broken and like kind of everything being shut down. Um, I, I I've been preaching for years that they need to run movies like the video game industry and like do beta tests and like not just focus on people and like test audiences in New York or LA, but like go to Oklahoma and like right. a little town or like Ohio or wherever. And, 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 and like do some of these just like, Hey, let's do a quick screening. We're going to invite 50 people. Um, it's not just going to be people who are bloggers. We're just going to like go to like the local shops and, and be like, Hey, let's, let's put out tickets and, and like, let them watch the movie and then do a Q&A afterwards and, you know, um, or even parts of the movie and, and just kind of like test and make sure it's it's going to do well. Because, like, the coasts aren't what make movies popular. It's the rest of the country that makes movies popular. And, like, this is one where it's like, I had no idea you were in L.A. I, it, it could have been any game shop in America. And, and that was the beauty of it. It wasn't, um, you know, like a lot of movies and TV shows. It's just always Burbank. It's always Burbank, California. And and it's like, eh, great. Um, show me something else. Um, 
and like you know so now they're like okay it's always new orleans or it's always chicago <laughs> but you know uh i i, I appreciated that in, in the movie that it was is like i mean this movie's timeless like you know like, I'm, I'm gonna look at this movie in 10 years and be like would cell phones have made this movie better or whatever the version of cell phones are in 10 years <laughs> and, and and it's gonna be like no like because it didn't matter it's it's about a group of people interacting you know competing with one one another but at the same time like have a genuine love for each other oh yeah 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 we um we actually got some um <laughs> a couple people commented that we didn't do like the big street point of view you know with like the establishing shots and you know all this stereotypical you know cookie cutter mm -hmm. hollywood things and and i was like well i i did think about it um, but I did want it to feel like it could have been anywhere, mm -hmm. like anybody's game shop, any, anybody's place that they go to and play with their friends. And so that's why we kept it the way we did. And, and even when you do see them outside <clears throat> briefly, we kept it tight mm -hmm. because I didn't want it to be like, oh, this is, you know, a street in LA. You yeah. Know? We never saw the storefront uh, really. I mean, just a little right. bit of it. And I think opening with Margo and Stu was was great because they weren't the main characters um but they were still important but like you're led to believe like okay like why am i going to care about these two as the main characters and like it, it's not until you know paul looks in the window and it's like oh this is our our you know quote unquote hero um yeah. like and then when he walks in and katie's like you know that's a glass door i was like oh my god that is just the funniest thing and something i would totally say um <laughs> so yeah and then when Aaron showed up I, I think like it, it was really funny because she was a complete outsider and in the way that you know they welcomed her like you know except for Wyatt um that that's that's like the general sense you get at, at these kind of things like you know I'm, I'm a big comic book collector and you know I'm always excited when people come into the comic book store for the first time or you know I like to just bring people to the comic book store it's like hey I gotta go run an errand and like you know next thing my friends know is like what I, what, what am i doing in a comic book store and then like here you need to read this this and this and this and they walk out having spent like 200 bucks um nice. and, and so yeah yeah my my my, my local comic book show my co local comic you. shop owner loves it yeah yeah um, <laughs> like i'll volunteer on like free comic book day and um yeah. like i always send people out with like different trades and it's like i'm always like hey stock up on this one this one and this one for adults and this one and this one and this one for kids i'm gonna move all of them for you <laughs> so um we had a lot of we had a lot of closet uh big time comic book collectors mm -hmm. uh, in our cast and crew that you know slowly shared you know that with us at various times because I guess they felt like you know most people would make fun of them but they felt safe around us you know with the, like yeah well, you could tell us that you collect stuff like that we're you know that's that's uh normal to they, were us. In a, they were in a safe space <laughs> yeah they were <laughs> so, um yeah. okay so what's next um are you gonna do more projects are you gonna are you gonna do another feature um you know like, well, what, right do you, now, what do you want to do? <laughs> well, um, so just just because I wanted to do something, um, because I haven't shot anything since tournament, mm -hmm. um, I I shot a little uh, Christmas short film, little fantasy um, over Valentine's weekend. So we're editing that right now. It's it's little special, low budget short. We're just going to put it online, just something fun um, to share with. Uh, you know, I think our followers would enjoy this as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'm, um, you know, Mike and I are working on the tournament two concept, which we've been knocking around for about a year. And I just literally need to sit down and start writing it. Um, we've just been writing notes and ideas mm -hmm. and uh, talking about new characters and um, the environment that they would be in. Just, we keep going back and forth with that. And then um, <clears throat> the, a couple game shops that we uh, had a lot of support from across the country have really, you know, asked us to consider filming in their game shop. Wow, cool! And uh, so we're, you know, we're thinking about, you know, maybe doing a, a, a short, limited, like web series that, you know, if it took off, maybe it would go, you know, we could get picked up by a 
in a, a studio or something, perhaps, I don't know, but I don't think it would be, it, but it wouldn't be the style, exact style of tournament. Um, it's the concept's different, but uh, it's that definitely the same world. But yeah, so that's, that's kind of what we're, we're doing. Very cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I was thinking this would be a good, like, series like tv series not like web series whatever like i like this would be like a like a cool thing to watch on hulu for 10 episodes every eight months you know um yeah. just because it, it, it's fun and you could make it a little more expansive and see more like um like aaron goes back to school and then you know paul's like well what do i do now um and then that's where you get the whole cobra kai version of tournament <laughs> where aaron's the bad guy um but no, uh, yeah, I th- I think that's really cool. So, when when it comes to like your your process for writing like a sequel to something that that you truly loved, like are you walking around with like post it notes and like sticking them everywhere? Do you have a notebook? Um, you know, are you putting it all digitally so that you don't make sure you don't lose anything? So I'm not quite as organized as um, you are thinking that I might be. <laughs> so I have like a couple different notebooks that I've been writing things in. And um, and then writing out some new characters mm-hmm. and some scenarios, and and we I don't I don't know well I guess you wouldn't know, um, but uh, we've been traveling up until I guess what October, uh, pretty much from right when we finished the film till till about October. About every couple months or so, we were going to a convention somewhere in the country. Mm-hmm. Uh, promoting the film. So sometimes we had a film festival or we did just a handful of um, gather screenings Mm -hmm. and um, so game shop screenings. And then, uh, then again, like the um, star city games events, we'd have a booth. So we were on the road a lot over like the course of, I guess, like two years. Okay. And um, so there wasn't a lot of, to me, like, good healthy writing time um but so it's it's very it's been sporadic but we've definitely had a lot of time in the vehicle in our car talking extensively about what we want to do and that's kind of how the tournament started is just us talking a lot about everything until until we just started writing (laughs) very cool so yeah well now you have nothing but time to write because you can't go do anything else (laughs) Yeah, it, you, you know, it's like that pressure now, of like, oh, so I better come up with something brilliant um, now that, you know, I have no, I should have no excuse for, for distractions. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, we're, but we're, you know, we're right now focused on finishing the short film. Mm-hmm. It's called Believe. Believe. It's about a guy. Cool. Yeah, he doesn't believe in Santa Claus. And, okay. And, and then Santa Claus is not very happy about it. So, um, so it's just a fun fun little short that sounds like fun yeah <laughs> uh, yeah i keep saying i'm gonna like do like i'm gonna watch a movie and i'm gonna do a podcast about that movie like right after watching it and like post something every day for people and yeah i haven't done any of that so <laughs> I, I get it um well cool all right so where where can people find the movie online besides i mean it's on amazon prime but is it is it streaming anywhere else um i couldn't find it on itunes to buy um but where, where can they find the movie? So, so originally we, um, so far we've had a uh, Blu-ray you can get from order from us, or we can see us at gaming conventions and it was for purchase or rent on uh, Amazon. And it literally just this past week, I think right when we reached out to you, just released it on for Amazon prime. Oh, awesome. And it's also on Vimeo. Okay. So you can rent it on Vimeo, rent or buy it on Vimeo. And that's where, um, because I guess Amazon is only UK, US right now. Mm-hmm. So anywhere else in the world, if you have a computer, that's how you can watch it on Vimeo. And we've had people from Europe watch it. And it's pretty cool. They're saying, oh, it's just like my game shop. And you're like, really? Just outside <laughs> the US? And we've had people from Australia too watch it. Like, this is great. This is hilarious. So, um, yeah, we hope to get it out there on more platforms. But just, yeah. we were going to wait till the summer, but we thought this would be a great time right mm-hmm. now while people are looking for stuff to watch and, not necessarily want any, uh, you know, the good comedies. Uh, this is a perfect time for a good comedy. So. A- absolutely. <laughs> like, like I told you, I watched it three times. Like the first time I watched it, like completely undivided attention. And then the second time I watched it while I was working and um, I'm a designer. And so like I was working, it was great. It was, it was just the perfect kind of like, 
it's not like white noise isn't the right word, but like the right kind of like inspiration, like, oh, hey, wait, something fun is going to happen. OK, I <laughs> figured something out in my head. Let's get back to this. And then the second time I watched it or the third time I watched it, like just undivided attention. So um, thank you. Yeah. No, I mean, that's that's great. I, I definitely like I think it's exciting like that Amazon does that. And yeah, Vimeo is is a great platform. Like it's, it's kind of unfortunate that that YouTube uh, won that war. But um, but yeah, and then where else can they find you online? Um, just our website, uh, tournamentmovie.com. And then um, you can find us on Instagram and uh, Facebook and Twitter. Okay, cool. And yeah. um, you, you said there was a behind the scenes um, video on your website. What's your website? Uh, it's tournamentmovie.com. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Thank awesome. you so much. Yeah, definitely. Do you have anything else you guys want to want to add before we go? I'm just, uh, you know, please sign up for our newsletter because uh, when we do release new content, uh, you would be the first to know. Cool. All right. Well, hey, thank you guys for coming so much. This was uh this was great. I thank you for reaching out to me on Instagram. Um, I I I did truly truly enjoy the movie very much. Um. Thank you. And like, I'm definitely down for tournament two um, when that comes out. <laughs> and when it comes out, you got to come back and, and promote it um, for oh, sure. Oh, for sure. So we we will give priority to everybody who gave us a <laughs> shot before everybody knew who we were. <laughs> That's for sure. That sounds good. Um, all right. Well, guys, thank you. Thank you so much for, for joining us. And, uh, you know, guys, go check out tournament. It's on Amazon right now um, for for our, our contingent in Poland. Check out Vimeo. You can rent and buy it there. So. All right. Again, thank you guys for coming. I appreciate it. And uh, hopefully we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Bye. All right. So thanks to Mike and Patricia for coming on and talking about tournament and making indie films and, you know, what it's like to be uh, indie filmmakers right now. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. That was great. Make sure you go check out the movie. It's on it's on Amazon Prime. It's it's a lot of fun. It's really good. Um, if you're a nerd, a geek, whatever, collector, tabletop gamer, desktop gamer console gamer it's just a lot of fun and and you're gonna see some of yourself and some of your friends in it and uh and yeah all right so you guys know you can find us online at infamouspodcast.com uh we're on spotify iHeartRadio now uh apple uh, apple podcast google play stitcher you know pretty much anywhere there's a podcast whatever your favorite podcasting app is we're on there if we're not let me know and I'll, i'll get on there um yeah, and on social, like I said, it's Infamous Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, we have new episodes every Sunday. If you like our music, uh, check out meetmichaelhenry.com. Michael Henry is a, a great little composer, and well, he's not so little, um, but he's a great composer, and, and, and he put our music together for us, and it's awesome. New episodes every Sunday. Uh, if you like what you hear and you are an Apple Podcast listener, go um, please give us a, a five-star review and and let us know how much you like the show if you're not that's fine too um just keep listening um and if you really want to help the show uh go find a friend ask to look at their phone pull up their spotify look up infamous podcast and subscribe and set their notifications so that they get notified when we have new episodes and maybe they'll start to listen and like it as much as you do anyway whenever you're listening to us have a great day night evening weekend whenever it is and i'll be back to talk to you soon later